Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. My name is Larry. My call sign is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Welcome back to the Shack in Northwest Oregon. It's Ham Radio Live. Very happy Wednesday, January 20th, 2021 to the world. Hello, hello, hello. So excited to see today's show is going to be big. A lot of teaching. Hopefully you're ready for it. I, I hope I'm ready for it. <laughs> Doing the show especially for our friends in Europe. They can watch it. And folks from all around the world. It's truly a joy to bring you this show just about every day. So thanks for coming. Ask you to please hit that subscribe button. I don't monetize here. That's right. I don't monetize. No ads. Nothing. I just ask that you subscribe. That's all. Please subscribe. Helps people find us here on YouTube. The bonus for you is you don't have to worry about hitting that skip ad button, right? That's pretty cool. Welcome to the show. Glad to see you. Today we're going to talk about something really kind of deep. And it's good for people who are new to not only ham radio, but shortwave radio in general, if you like to DX, things like that. Before we start the show, I want to shout out big to expresscopy.com. Finally got the QSL cards. There it is. The QSL cards arrived. So if you have sent me a QSL card recently, like my friend Savvy did. We'll get into these in a little bit. Not probably today, but, but we'll get into it. Today's pretty pretty heavy show. This is one that comes from Santa Ana, California. Look at that. Walty Savvy Savinovich. Very nice. Very nice. His great QSO, Larry. Uh, very nice. This was back on the 31st of October, 2020. It was our Halloween show. That was great. Savvy, you can for sure expect to get a qsl card back that's beautiful look at that looks like a nice all-wheel drive vehicle way up in the hills of southern california wow that's pretty sweet well welcome to the show everybody so glad to see you thank you for coming we're going to talk today about something that's a little deep but i'm going to try and make it as easy as i can by using a comparison all right and and i know some people are going to say well, that's really not a very good comparison. And that's okay. That's your opinion. I get it. I'm here to try and help teach radio principles to people. And you may do it a different way. And that's totally cool. Okay. This way I figured was the easiest way for folks to maybe understand. So if you don't understand things like what double conversion or triple quadruple conversion means on ham radios or receivers of any kind, this hopefully will help you. Okay. Why do super heterodynes exist? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use actually roads and striping on roads to help you, sh you know, try to show you a little bit about the difference in double, triple conversion versus single conversion. So we're going to use roads today. Enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. And you'll find out why here in just a little bit. Let's start out by where we all began where we all began. No kidding. Look at this. This is a diagram, block diagram. Thank you for the th thumbs up. That's awesome. Thank you very much. That's cool. Okay. This was where radio started way back. Two radio frequency receiver. Take a look at that. Each one of those RF stages, that's a tube. Yep. That's a tube. Another thumbs up. Thanks. That's <laughs> pretty cool. All right. So it went through the first RF amp. That's tube number one. Then as you tuned up, you'd fire up a second one. Then you'd fire up a third one, right? Then we'd hit the detector. That's where it senses the RF, right? From the tube. Goes through an amplifier and then out through the power amp because you need a double amplification to get to your speaker. That was how it looked, okay, from a practical perspective. Want to welcome Gunter from Germany. Hello, Gunter. Hollywood Gunter is in the house making some big DX calls too. We're going to do a show talking a little bit about the work he does. I think it's pretty special and I think it'll warm your heart. It's a very unique story. Stick around for that. Coming up here in about a show or two. Okay. So we're going to start out with this. Now, what did it look like to actually work one of these radios? Let me show you. This is amazing. Look at this guy. Look, he has to use three fingers, essentially, to operate the radio. Keep in mind, three tubes. Now, look at that giant horn, right? 
for the speaker because you've got to be able to hear it. That's the old days. That's before super heterodynes came out. RCA helped introduce the first super heterodyne radio back in 1918. So let's take a look at what that looks like from a perspective of comparing things. Okay, so we're going to compare this a little differently. I may not get to your comments real quick because this is such a deep teaching show. I'd like to make sure to make the point get real strong here. So forgive me if I don't get your comments on the screen real quick. But this is so important for people who aren't in radio and would like to learn about, you know, down converting, what that means, up converting, things like that. Like when you take a look at a, you know, a nice manual like this, Kenwood TS990S, okay? Beautiful manual. Talks all about their conversion process and how it all works and all the parts inside of it. Everything's beautifully done. Beautifully done. I know Callum McCormick's got this receiver. I know he loves it. Great radio. Look at this. I'd like to have one of these. I would, in a heartbeat, not a problem. This is Kenwood TS990S. And we're going to kind of focus a little bit more on his baby brother, the TS590SG today, because that's kind of where we're going in terms of what it does and an easier way to help to try and describe not only double but triple conversion. And we'll, we'll touch just a skosh on quadruple, but this is going to kind of hopefully be enough for you guys to understand. All right. Think of radio where it's kind of like a road, okay? You have a road that you're driving on. Okay, this is the way it used to be. There was really no lines, no boundary, no line down the center to keep the cars in each side. It was just a single road. You just go all over the place. That's how radio used to actually be, you know? because there was no sensitivity really because the tubes just picked up RF and there was no selectivity between radios. So you have what's called no image rejection. You could get signals together that would merge. Okay, now of course we know that is IMD, which is intermodulation distortion. That's when you have two signals and they form into an additional signal. It was a problem. So superheterodynes helped to fix that, but it couldn't fix everything. That's why there's different conversion levels. We'll talk about that. Let's show you first the typical superhet, which is a single conversion path, okay? Typical single conversion for a superheterodyne radio looks like this. You've got your kite up there at the top left, okay? That's the antenna, comes into the RF filter. Then it goes to a local oscillator. That's the part that could confuse some people. By the way, hello to Alex, hello to Thor, both of you. Happy Wednesday. Good to see you guys. And Adam, thank you so much. November 4, Alpha Lima Victor is in the house as well. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Sorry. All right. So the signal comes in and you have your, your tuner tuned on to a frequency, right? Well, in order for the radio to maintain a good lock on that frequency, it needs help. That's the local oscillator. The local oscillator essentially is like a little transmitter. Okay, it's set either at a fixed frequency or at a variable frequency. Typically in a super hat, it is always fixed. Okay, typically. So that local oscillator might be say at, well, let's say it's at nine megahertz, okay? And if you are working, say, 40 meters at seven megahertz, okay, now it's up converting, okay? It's up converting to that local oscillator, all right? Anyway, in this stage, it goes, let's say, for example, nine megahertz is the local oscillator. That's the transmitter that's going to the radio, okay? And then it, it has that transmission, Okay, that localized transmission in the radio at nine megahertz. And then you have your, your center frequency here. There's a difference, right, between the two. That difference always maintains your carrier or center frequency. It always will maintain it and lock it on frequency. Now, there are various types of oscillators. You can get what's called a TXCO, which is a great oscillator. It's made to help to really maintain locking on frequency. You can get an OXCO. Those are oven baked and they have higher tolerances. So they're going to be a lot more stable. 
okay? That's going really the high end for contesters, things like that, really high performance radios, okay? Like the 990, all right. So you have your single hybrid, sorry, your single super head. And your single super head, which is very important to just show, show you one more time real quick. Signal comes in, goes in through your RF amp, Okay, but when it comes into the RF filter, it also sends the signal to the local oscillator. Remember, that has to use a trans, a small transmitter that transmits to that receiver to maintain the frequency, whatever the difference is. Now, in a super hat, you have the sum of the carrier frequency or the center frequency you're on. Okay, you have the sum between the local oscillator set frequency and the center frequency that you're on, you also have the difference of the two, okay? On a super heterodyne, they will always be the difference of the two, typically, okay? So it will always maintain the difference between the two oscillators, between the oscillator and your carrier or center frequency. Always, that difference will always be maintained. And the reason they do that is because it's going to keep you on frequency. That's the main point. It's to help eliminate image is you know because of image rejection you want image rejection within that radio there is the piece that comes up to your mixer and then to your intermediate frequency amplifier and filter your if amp and filter then go to your demodulator out to your audio amp and away you listen that's got done by the way in lightning fast time literally okay so local oscillator is a, basically a baby transmitter that keeps your radio right locked on frequency, okay? They're usually set, and the difference of the two, as you tune, that local oscillator frequency changes as well, so they stay together, okay? Helps keep you, essentially, on the road, okay? So when you're thinking about this type of, you know, <laughs> this type of, of, of a radio, you're really looking at, a a road that just simply I'm, I'm looking for the picture and I can't find my picture now, which is really interesting. I've got so much that's been into this into this uh, into this show that there's a million pictures. All right, here it is finally. You're basically looking at this now. You have a line down the center. Think of that as your super het single conversion. Okay, it keeps you on frequency. That dotted line right down the center just keeps you on frequency. All right, so that's the way you lock it on. That's a single super head. Now there's a there's you know good image rejection there because you're not going to have stations that are merging so much coming in and forming IMD. It's a good way to block it, but there is a flaw. The flaw is in selectivity. See, the selectivity. Remember, is a, the radio's ability to pull out a strong station from a weak station, selectivity, okay? The radio's ability to select the two is marginal in that design. So engineers many, many decades ago came up with a double conversion super heterodyne radio, all right? Let me show you what that looks like to give you an idea of the difference in these two. But before I do that, let me show you one more time the single conversion path so it all makes sense. Single conversion, one local oscillator. It's that pink square with the, you know, lazy S on its side right there at the bottom. Okay. Local oscillator. So it has one that helps to fight image rejection, helps you to keep on frequency. It also helps you to maintain the ability to, you know, not have stations merging into each other. Okay. Now you got your double heterodyne, your double super het. Your double super heterodyne radio path looks like this. It adds an oscillator. Now, this is done to help maintain sense, uh, sorry, selectivity. It's for selectivity in a radio receiver. Comes in through the RF filter, hits that first local oscillator. Again, typically, this one now is usually a variable frequency oscillator, usually on the first one. Goes in the mixer, then through the intermediate frequency filter and amp into the second mixer. Now see, there's a second local oscillator now. This one is typically much lower 
much lower in frequency than the first local oscillator. And the reason for that is because engineers are looking for selectivity to be able to separate signals, okay? From the second local oscillator goes into the second intermediate amplifier and filter, then demodulates into your amplifier and out to your radio. Okay, a double superheterodyne conversion basically does this to the road now. Now it's giving you fog lines in the center line. Not only can you maintain your frequency like you see with the dotted lines in the center of the road, but the fog lines on the side of the road help keep you on the road for selectivity to stay in your lane. Same thing. It's basically the same thing. Okay. So when you add a double conversion super heterodyne radio, what you're essentially doing is you're saying, okay, we're going to build a radio that's going to keep you on frequency. Great locking ability. Great for image rejection. But we also have to help you with selectivity so you can hear better. Now, these are typically on high performance radios, ham radios, strong end shortwave radios, military radios, radios that have to perform well. Okay? So double super heterodynes. Again, add those fog lines, add that center road, uh, center line, excuse me, and all of a sudden everything becomes more clear. The radio works better. And it works better because it allows you to hear the signals better but also maintain your frequency without having loud signals come in and start monstering all over you, okay? Now, there is a super heterodyne that has a triple conversion. It's true. Okay, on a triple conversion super heterodyne, what you essentially have is a third local oscillator. So now you have three. You have three of these oscillators inside this receiver. Now, think of the expense that goes into these, okay? Especially today, since most manufacturers are kind of switching over to software-defined radios, which are cheaper to build because they don't require crystal filters, okay? Remember, you have to have crystal roofing filters in a super heterodyne radio. Those, when they set the local oscillators, they have to set them for the roofing filters that are for that radio to make them very selective on frequencies. That's why you have roofing filters. It's because of the selectivity. You want to be able to knock out the big station to pick up the small one. Okay. So when you have a triple head, basically now you're adding a third local oscillator to that section. So let's take a quick look real quick at what this looks like. Remember, here's the double. You've got two oscillators. Okay, now, say in the Kenwoods, for example, here's, you, here's what their diagram looks like. A great explanation of how it works. Okay, this is a down conversion radio. Take a look first at the top. Let's take a look at how this all works, okay? You have at the top, let's look at the top square, okay? shows down conversion path, okay? And it says double super heterodyne for 1.8, which is gonna be your top band or, you know, 1800 to two megahertz. Your 3.5, which is of course 80 and 75 meters, seven, 14, 21 amateur bands. So these are for essentially the top band or 160, 80, 40, 20, and 10, excuse me, uh, 12, pardon me, 15, pardon. <laughs> have to think a little bit. 15 is 21 megahertz, okay. All right, if the received pass band is 2.7 kilohertz or less, so if you've lowered down your roofing filters, okay, and you're receiving in single sideband Morse code or digital modes, okay, it's gonna be a double super heterodyne down converting radio. It's gonna use the upper path, one, mixer the local oscillator is set to 11.374 megahertz down it goes to the third mixer and then out to your third intermediate frequency of 24 kilohertz see that kilohertz why do you think it has that kilohertz it's for selectivity 
that's why. Look at the other local oscillators, okay? First one's 73.095 megahertz. Okay, so there's your initial oscillator to keep your radio's, you know, signal stable. Your, your frequency receives signal stable, okay? Then it goes to the second mixer. That brings it down now, see? 10.695 megahertz. I don't want to lose you here. I'm not trying to. But consider it this way. This radio, as it works, knows how to not only keep you locked on frequency, but give you additional selectivity to maintain that strong receiver that you need to tune weak signals in. Okay? That last IF, and remember IF means intermediate frequency, digital Okay, this goes out through a DSP, digital signal processor, is out at 24 kilohertz. Okay, if it uses the up conversion path, that's the bottom one. You see double lines there, okay? That's a triple heterodyne then. All right, let's say, for example, you are above 15 meters. Right now you're on 12, 10, 6. Now it's a triple het. Okay, now it uses all of those mixer stages. It needs to to maintain its selectivity. That's why it does what it does. Okay, this is a great example of the Kenwood 590. This is exactly what it is. This is how it works. So when you see like a 590, for example, if you don't, if you don't know what one looks like, here's a Kenwood TS 590 Sugar Golf. Beautiful radio. Looks very similar, actually, if you think about it, to the Elecraft. K4, sorry, K3, excuse me. If you look at the K3 and, you know, take a look at the similarities, look at that. Very similar to those two radios. It is. But you're talking about it will be a triple superheterodyne if you go 12, 10, or 6. If you stay below 12, say 12 or below, and sorry, 15, sorry, 15 meters or, you know, lower in frequency, so 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, and so forth. It's going to be a double conversion. All right. So when you have now three, your road looks very great, right? Your road now is really set. You have everything you need on a super hat that's triple conversion. You not only have the fog lights, but you also have that center line Let's take a look at this. We've all been on these roads. We've all been on the roads like this. Okay. Triple or quadruple super heterodynes. Again, the reason they exist is to give you not only excellent image response capabilities to keep the, the ghost signals and all the IMD away. So separation, you know, real good sensitivity. You can really hear those signals in very, very well, right? And then you get that extra set of intermediate frequencies and local oscillators that both will help keep you on frequency, but also help on your selectivity to keep the big guys from the little guys so you can hear them better. Now, in this case, look at the road. You got two lanes. You got the fog lines to keep you in your lane nice and steady, but only one lane can pass. See that? That's the, the line on the right where you have the dotted lines, kind of the dashed lines, I guess, and then the solid line to its left, okay? If you look at it this way, it can only pass one direction, okay? That's kind of like Kenwood's super hat. That's a triple, okay? If you are on 12, 10, or 6, you can pass. If you're on 40, say, you know, 15, 17, 20, and so forth, you can't. You're going to stay where you are, okay? So double and super triple heterodyne radios are basically set to help you perform better with your radio. They're to make it work better, to help you not only hear signals better without having interference from other stations, but they also exist to help you with selectivity so that you can separate signals and really break in that, that rare DX call that's coming in that might be close to another station that's really, really strong. It's really a, a fascinating process and it's getting more and more rare as the years go by because again, the components for these are getting to be expensive, okay? There's a reason you see 
Say, for example, the Yesu 5000 priced as high as it is, okay, because it, it's, it's, <laughs> it has so many crystal filters in it and local oscillators in it, that's expensive to produce today. Software-defined radios are much cheaper to produce than super heterodyne crystal oscillator, you know, local oscillator filter radios. You know, those radios are so more expensive today because fewer and fewer manufacturers are buying those parts. Therefore, the parts are more expensive. I hope that makes sense, okay? So what about software-defined? Because there is a difference, okay? How they work, okay. When you have your direct sampling software-defined radio, like an ICOM 7300, for example, all right, you've got your antenna coming in, okay, goes right into an on analog to digital conversion process right away, goes into your channelization and sample rate conversion, and then it goes right into the processing. See, that's where your FPG is. Okay, your field programmable gate array basically tells the computer or the radio itself exactly what to do with the signal, how you want to tune it, how you want to convert it maybe with passband filtering or with noise reduction or with notch control, right? It helps to make the radio do what you want it to, but instead of using crystal filters to do it, it uses basically software. The computer tells the radio exactly what to do, okay? That's a direct software, software-defined radio. So direct sampling right off the antenna, takes it into an A to D converter, tells the radio what to do. The radio does what you want it to do with the knobs in the front or with the mouse on your computer if you're talking about a, like a flex, okay? If you're talking about a hybrid SDR, this is a hybrid SDR. Now we've got the best of both worlds. You have super heterodyne and you have an SDR. Antenna comes in, goes in through an RF filter and see what comes first, the local oscillator. All right. Now in Yesu's case, for example, on their 101s, on their FTDX 10s, that local oscillator crystal roofing filter is set, okay? Sorry, it's a crystal roofing. The local oscillator is set to nine megahertz. So it's a nine megahertz front end on the Yesu, whether it be the Mono One or it be the um, FTDX10, the brand new FTDX10, it's going to be at nine megahertz. So that's gonna help keep you locked on frequency, okay? Remember, direct sampling doesn't have that local oscillator, remember? There's no local oscillator, but in the SDR, the hybrid SDR, it's there, first thing. Local oscillators right there to help maintain lock-on frequency. That is, that's really all it's there for. It's to help you with image rejection. That goes into low-pass filters, your ADC, and then it's into your field programmable gate array, and then you can see the computer on the right, the host, okay? The ADC, basically the interface where it says USB, that's your field programmable gate array. That's where everything gets done in this radio. So think of it this way. You get your signal coming in. Say you're on... Uh, Let's say, for example, I don't know, 40 meters. Let's say it's 7.150 just for argument's sake. That local oscillator is going to help tell the radio to stay locked on frequency based on that first local oscillator, okay? Because it's going to transmit into the radio to tell the center frequency, this is the difference. We need to lock right here. Don't move. Basically, that's it, okay? Now, from there, everything is controlled by software, all right? That's from there, it's software. It's more for helping radios to be very sensitive. It's very good for sensitivity in SDRs. Now, with the Elecraft K4, if you buy the K4 HD, which is not available at this time, the time of this video, which is January 20th, 2021, Elecraft is going one megahertz less on their intermediate frequency for their local oscillator. So think of it this way. It's going to be the exact same thing as this in terms of your, you know, your software defined um, radio path, if that makes sense. Okay. So if you're dealing with your hybrid SDR path, if Yesu is at nine megahertz on that local oscillator, Kenwood, sorry, Elecraft is at eight megahertz local oscillator. What's the difference? You know, it's only one megahertz, right? What's the difference in that? 
According to Ellicraft, no optional roofing filters are necessary because it's a lower front end on the intermediate frequency oscillator than Yesu has. So Yesu has the optional 500 Hertz CW filter for the FTDX10, for example. On the FTDX101, they have an optional 1.2 kilohertz SSB filter plus the 500 Hertz CW filter, okay? So that's what really helps get things set up for an SDR, hybrid SDR. Sorry, I said 500, I'm at 300, 300 Hertz, pardon me. That's the difference. So you can buy those optionally. Okay, from Yesu, you go to your manufacturing retailer, say it's Ham Radio Outlet. You tell them, look, I want to add this to my FTDX 10. I really want that, that CW filter or on your FTDX 101. Hey, I want to add the 1.2 SSB filters, right? So you take it to them. They then charge you for the work that Yesu is going to do. They then ship it. You can't ship your own radio. It has to go through your retailer. The retailer will send it to Yesu in Cypress, California. They'll take the radio apart, add your parts in, calibrate everything, put the lid back on, make sure everything works right, and then they will send it directly to your door. Okay? That's how you do it with Yesu if you want to buy the optional filters. On the Elecraft, there is no optional filters needed. Okay? At an 8 megahertz incoming, you know, intermediate frequency, it's locked. If you do the HD option, which right now, again, is not yet for sale. The neat thing about the K4, I will say up front, is if you do buy the HD option, you can turn it on or off at your discretion. That's pretty sweet. So if you want to use it as a hybrid, great. Use it as a hybrid. But then if you want to turn that super heterodyne front end off, you can do that too. That's pretty cool. I think that's really sweet. That's a very, very neat option for the K4. So that's what we got. So that is a big deal when you're talking about going all the way from, you know, dealing from here, which essentially you're all over the road, right? There's no lines, nothing to protect you, right? All the way to this, for example, when you go on the road and you're, you know, all of a sudden now you've got a little bit of guidance. Not only that, but you know when you can pass or when you can't pass because you've got one lane that can go through, one lane that can't. That's very similar if you think about it to the triple heterodyne design of the Kenwood. You can pass if you're going to be on 12, 10, or 6 into a triple hit, which is an up converter. If you're going to be on, you know, 15, 17, 20 or lower, then you're going to be a double head. Now it's going to be a down converting radio. Think about it this way. It's down converting because of the first intermediate frequency. That's why. So if you're below that intermediate frequency, it's going to up convert. If you are above it, it's going to down convert. That's the way it works. Let's take a look at your comments before we close the show. Tons of stuff here. My goodness. Welcome to Thor. Hello, Adam. Good to see you. Alpha, sorry, November 4, Alpha Lima Victor. Good to see you. You guys just been talking. Look at you guys. Holy moly. Dave, Temecula, California. First time I've seen you. Welcome to the show, man. Great to see you. Whiskey 6, Charlie Romeo Tango. Thank you for coming, Dave. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, please. We just ask people to subscribe here. Notice you haven't seen any ads. When you watch this on replay, if you want to, you'll see there's no ads there either. You can watch the show or listen to it from beginning to end. That's the way it's set up. So thank you for that. <laughs> Gunter, listen to the future, Kenwood. What he's talking about is Kenwood currently doesn't make any SDRs. They just make super heads. Nothing wrong with that. I would love to have a 990. That would be the coolest radio. I'd love that. Be awesome. Love to play with that. But they haven't yet converted over to SDR. So that's the reason he's saying that. And he's right. Thor says, is it true that the Kenwood folks are getting out of amateur radio? I haven't heard that yet. I've got no confirmation, but I'll check. I will check, Thor. By the way, thanks for coming all the way from Minnesota today. It's always good to see you. A good friend from the state of Minnesota. Yes. Thank you, buddy. Yep, Minnesota's here. All right, let's take a look more of your comments. Eric, good to see you. Kilo 3, 
Uh, so, yeah, Kilo 3 Echo Lima Golf is here. Thanks, Eric. Good to see you. How have you been, man? Hope everything's going well. How's the DX going? I know that you're doing very well on Callum's Nebula Antenna. I think that's wonderful. Good for you, man. Yeah, that's good. Fred, hello to my friend Kilo Germany 7 Whiskey Echo Quebec. What a joy it is to see you, Fred. Thanks for being here. Thank you very, very much. All right. And Ward Dixon, thank you. That is my good friend, Whiskey Six. Whiskey, Whiskey Delta. Thank you, Ward. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Uh, what do we need to say? We're in at 35 minutes. It's pretty long. So we're going to wrap it in a bow right there because you know, I thought of maybe going to the rig and trying to work on 17, but I think at this time point, we're good. Let's leave the show the way it is because I hope it helps to teach you a little bit about what down converting, what up converting, what double conversion and triple conversion mean on these because you read about it, but maybe you don't know exactly what it means. You know, think about it again in the way of the roads, okay? If you have just basically nothing, you've got no direction. There's you fall off the road or hit the rocks, right? If you've got a single conversion super head, okay? Now you've got, sorry, double conversion. Now you've got the fog lines and the dash lines. You've got direction and you've got lanes to keep you safe right down the middle. You're not going to hit anything. So good image rejection or car rejection this way, but also good selectivity because it keeps you right in the middle of the road, right in the middle of your lane because you got lines on both sides. Selectivity, right? Keeps you right where you want to be. Helps you to select that station without drifting too far or losing that signal too much. Selectivity is big. That's when you get your double and triple super heterodyne designs. And finally, when you get to that triple super het, you have the option, depending upon what frequency you're at, to either pass or not pass, depending upon which frequency you're on. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe. We do not do any ads here. We're not sponsored by anybody either. I do this to try and give out of the kindness of my heart. And it's a joy, a pure joy for me to do that. That's sincere. Please hit the subscribe button. It does truly make a difference, okay? From all around the world, Ed, thank you so much for joining us. This is Kilo 9 Echo Japan Whiskey. Nice to see you, Ed. What a joy. Thank you for coming. Yeah. And uh, Eric, good luck on that 1,000. Until next time, everybody. God bless you. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Happy hump day. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody.